The Sarno Supremacy was the original Capellan state. They were the first to be founded in the entire region in 2176. Sarno is actually one of the first few systems to be colonized by humans. There's not much information on the original settlers of the system, but they would eventually have a dictatorial style of government, led by a single premier. Unfortunately, there isn't any information on how a premier selected. It's not hereditary, because all the four named premiers, they have different names, yes. <laughs> Regardless, being one of the first systems to be colonized, Sarna had a pretty good head start compared to the Capellan states. Before the Confederation, they were the biggest in terms of military, economy, and industry. This, coupled with their culture that values productivity and efficiency over personal freedoms, will lead them to be the strongest nation in the region. The state will slowly expand out until their borders met the borders of younger Capellan states, such as the Capellan Holdfast, the Tikkunov Grand Union, and the St. Ives Association. Big nations have big ambitions. Most of these ambitions, though, are usually at the expense of smaller ones. In 2225, the Premier of Sarna, Emmanuel de Nevere Brun, declared war on the Capellan Holdfast, now known as the Capellan Republic. Emmanuel saw the growing republic as a threat to Sarna's influence in the region. The attack on Capella was a failure. The republic called upon their trade partners, including the systems of Ares, Kuregin, and Bandora, to form the Capellan Co Prosperity Sphere and fought off the Sarns. The supremacy was fortunate that a Capellan counterattack never occurred. This lull in hostilities allowed them to fully annex some systems, though, such as Old Kentucky, where the Sarns would help the system revive their economy due to being cut off from Terra by the Demarcation Declaration. Their help would eventually result in Old Kentucky fully submitting themselves to the supremacy. The news of war are money. Money and money. The last war will not be the last between supremacy and the Republic, or now known as hegemony. Around 2305, the systems of Palos and Wei, two very mineral rich systems within the supremacy, would declare independence after years of taxation and economic exploitation from the Sarns. That and also its inhabitants' strong beliefs of personal freedoms, and the complete opposite of supremacies. There was a complete information blockade when the system seeded, and it took three weeks before the hegemony was alerted of this new development in the region. And when they did hear of it, they held an emergency meeting to decide whether to support the two systems on the principle of democracy and freedom. But before a decision could be made, Sarnor Premier Kazen Chandler sent a communique to Pelham Prime magnate Paula Arich, which basically said, and I'm paraphrasing here, Stay out or get clapped. That was all that was needed for Paula to make her mind up and deliver the following speech. I'm going to have to put my fan voice up. <clears throat> Give me a sec. <clears throat> there are those in recent days who have argued that the affairs of Palos in a way do not concern us. After all, it is said, we are no Pelusians. After all, it is said, way is so far away. To such counsel, I could not disagree more vehemently. To those who say we are not of Palos, let me remind you, our cousins are dying this very night in defense of principles we hold dear. What greater bond do we need to share? Today, I am a Pelosian too. Today I feel uh, gay. To those who say that Wei is so very far away, let me remind you that Sarna is so very much closer. We're coming for you, Premier Chandler. We're coming for you. And with that, the Second War was declared. What was supposed to be a four-week operation quickly turned to a four-year one. The Gemini Military Command, the Strategios, highly overestimated the capabilities of their forces. At the onset of the war, they had to rely on border units that were less equipped for a full-scale invasion. They chose not to wait until the St. Andre Garrison, a bigger and more better equipped unit, could fully mobilize due to the supremacy already prepared state. They thought a quick strike towards the capital was all that was needed to end it. But for a full eight months, the Gemini forces repeatedly tried to invade Sarna. Every single time, they were pushed back. Sarna came up with a new rapid reinforcing tactic that allowed them to quickly replenish all of their losses, which the Capellans just could not counter. Every time the Capellans launched another attack, they would face fresh defenders that would beat them back, over and over again. Even though the Capellans had numbers, the sheer fanaticism of Sarn troopers 
would overwhelm the Capellans. This will eventually lead Palos to be reoccupied by the Sarns. The resistance showed by the inhabitants of Palos was fierce. As revenge, or just to make them an example, one out of three Pelosian males would be executed. In the next eight months, from October 2305 to May 2306, the Capellans would face another problem. The Southern Intelligence would hire the Cloanian pirates to hit and run attacks on systems within Capellan borders. The systems are Redfield, Daniels, Lee, Ball, and Highspire. This severely impacted the Capellan's ability to mount offensive operations due to having to divert troops to these systems. There was some success for the Capellans though within this time frame. Palos, though still occupied, was fully blockaded and Wei was successfully defended. It wasn't until early 2306 when the Capellans turned things around against the pirates. With contingents from St. Ives and Chesterton, they hunted and destroyed the pirates in a battle at Alcyon. During salvaging operations after the battle, the Capellans recovered some evidence that House Davion was potentially involved in the hiring of the pirates, marking the first recorded instance of an anti-Capellan operation from House Davion. The Strategos, Capellan High Command, would take a few pointers from the Sarns after the hiring of pirates, as they would try to mimic it by involving a third party to stretch Sarn forces thin. This, however, did not go entirely to plan. In the spring of 2306, Paula Aris held a secret meeting with the newly established Free Worlds League. In exchange for additional military support, the Capellan hegemony would recognize League territorial claims. League help, however, would come in the form of newly trained militia units, completely green in terms of combat. But at the same time, they would open another front where they would occupy and later annex the Sarn systems of Wasat and Berenson. Regardless, the plan seemed to work at first. The combined might of the Gemini and League forces were able to occupy 17 Sarna systems. But then, the civilians of these planets would resist them fiercely. Hundreds to thousands of occupying soldiers would be killed in riots or targeted attacks on some of these systems. The occupying force had to resort to draconian measures to keep the civilians pacified. It was getting so you didn't know who your real enemies were. I mean, the regulars didn't give us as much trouble as the damn civvies. Just yesterday in Baker Sector, this little tyke, no more than six or seven, comes up with a basket of bread. She says her mum done bake for us. Hot it was and smelling so sweet and fresh like, as his little and looking just like a picture postcard. The shanters people had a duty that morning, and they were around two dozen or so checking weapons at the barracks when the little doppel walked in. So there they all sat, eating, sharing the tea with her, and little lun smiling pretty as you please. To the first trooper drops over dead from the striking in the bread. The little one runs out in the confusion, the rest are too far gone to do anything but watch their mates are dying. These are the people we're supposed to be saving. It was never supposed to be like this. Never. There was trouble on the home front too. The war took a heavy toll on the Capellan economy, and member states of the Germany were heavily taxed to offset it. This eventually led to a citywide riot in the capital of Arboris in December 2308. The prefecture of Arboris would then announce their cessation from the Gemini. This development completely blindsided them. With the potential for the complete solution of the Gemini at stake, Paula Aris dispatched the second Enduring Reserve Fleet to quickly move to occupy the system. On their way to Arboris, though, they met with an unexpected development. The second fleet was blocked by hastily armed merchant ships flying the flag of the Independent Republic of Lao under the command of Emil Faulkner Lao. It turned out that Arboris had applied and been granted a protectorate status by the Independent Republic. This meant that any move made against Arboris will be considered an act of war against the Independent Republic. The commanding officer of the second fleet, Admiral Ishidai, was an entirely flexible man. He saw the Lao Fleet as an obstacle for his true goal of occupying Arbus, and thus, he attacked. As if expecting this, Lao would slowly pull his forces back, goading Ishidai into committing full force. It was at this moment when additional Lao ships entered sensor range. A two-hour battle commenced, and even though Ishidai managed to drive the ragtag fleet of armed merchant ships off, his own fleet suffered greatly. Now with significantly less ships, Ishidai abandoned his original mission and decided instead to blockade the Lao system. He left his fleet to do that, while he himself went back to Capella to report all this and receive new orders. Upon learning of this rebellion and Ishidai's failure to stop it, 
the Free Wars League would immediately pull out the war against the supremacy. Fearing more rebellions would happen, Paula Aris would call for an armistice in May 2309. The peace talks were concluded in December the same year of the Tikhonov Grand Union arbitrating, and Paula Aris would later take her own life three weeks after the execution of Admiral Ishidai. The rest, as they say, is history. After this war, the entire Capellan region united in the commonality, which led a collapse following a failed invasion of the Navy on space. Amid the chaos of the collapse, Duke Franco Lao seized the opportunity and forced the region, including the supremacy itself, into his new confederation. 